last minute shakeup at 5.30 a.m., laundry situation not good. And when your focus is on helping your clients, it's easy to forget about yourself. But NASM knows trainers. Morning, Ryan. It's okay. And staying in front of the day isn't always as simple as one, two, three. So when the unexpected has you pressing pause. What's the latest on creatine? I'm going to get back to you on that. Let NASM1 help you press play. Visit nasm.org to sign up for a membership today. You're listening to the NASM CPT Podcast with Rick Ritchie, winner of the Share Care Emmy Award for Social Storytelling and the official podcast of the National Academy of Sports Medicine. Hey, y'all, and welcome to the NASM CPT Podcast. My name is Rick Ritchie, and today we're going to talk about money. We're going to talk about money kind of as a follow-up episode to one that I did last week or the week before where we talked a little bit about money and I got some questions about it. So one of the things that came up was about taxes. And I will will say this, like, I I am not a CPA. The only thing I know about taxes is how much I got to pay in them. Oh, I don't know that much. But what I'm going to do is share with you a little bit of information as education, not as uh, law, right? So I would say if you're doing your taxes, you got a tax professional, still go to them. But this is just to give you an idea of some things that can be helpful when it comes to your, your taxes. So one of the things that we get asked about uh, that came up is like, what can I write off? And And I think that that's a good question. And there's a lot of debatable things for me in there that I have different types of businesses. So as a business owner, that works a little bit differently than if I am a personal trainer. But I will say this, there are a lot of fitness related things that you can write off, but you may not need to. And the reason I say that is for a couple of reasons. One, if if you have an employer and you receive a W-2, you, there's no reason for you to write anything off. It's not it's not benefiting your business, so to speak. It's somebody else's business. You are employed by them. So you're not allowed to write anything off unless you've got a business outside of your W-2 business. So we'll talk about that. But another thing that might be going on here is that you may not need to write things off because of this. I'm just going to read this for you. This is called a standard deduction. And everybody gets the standard deduction. What is a standard deduction? It means that you get to deduct like there's no taxes on this amount of your income. So here for 2024, the standard deduction amount has been increased for all filers from the previous year. And the amounts are as follows. Single or married filing separately, $14,600. Filing jointly, $29,200. Head of household, $21,900. That's a lot of money as a standard deduction. So if you're a W-2 employee and you say, all right, well, I don't want to claim any deductions. And then at the end of the year, you do your taxes. Basically, you're letting the government borrow money for free, which I don't mind. I've done that for a long time and they can borrow the money because it keeps me from spending it. And then at the end of the year, I would get money back. And I loved that. So that's something that I think was very important. People are like, you're letting the government borrow your money. No, no, I'm letting the, yeah, sure, sure, government, go ahead. You definitely need it. And they're getting some interest back on it. But what's going to happen at the end of the year? I'm getting money back on it. Now, today, I would do that a lot differently if I were employed because I would do things that would say, hey, let me keep my money. I'll invest it and I'll get a return from the market on that. And that's more beneficial than letting the government borrow. But early on, that's what I did. And I didn't mind it. Today, these days, I would be like, hey, all the money I'm claiming, every single deduction I can claim, I want to keep as much money that, because it'll come back to you at the end of the year, but I want to keep as much as possible because I am going to take whatever's extra and just put a little bit into, uh, uh, into the market and try to get some return on that. Now, if you are not employed, like a W-2 employee, then the number one thing that you should do to see if you spend more money than the standard deduction, get a business credit card. 
Now, the business credit card doesn't have to be Chase Business Inc. card, you know, not a specific business card, but a card that the only thing you ever, ever, ever buy is business related expenses. You need to buy bands, goes on there. You need to buy a suspension trainer, goes on there. You need to buy a wobbly board, goes on there. You need to buy a bullhorn to yell at your clients. Mm, write it off. It goes in there. You, know, you can you write off anything that's going towards your business. But I will say this. This is where people go wrong. They they think, well, if I if I spend a thousand dollars, if something costs one thousand dollars, that means that you pay one thousand dollars less in taxes. That's not what that means at all. Just because you do a business expense and it costs you a thousand dollars doesn't mean it's a thousand dollars less of taxes you owe. It means you don't owe taxes on that one thousand dollars. So if your tax bracket, let's say it's a twenty percent tax, that means that you would owe two hundred dollars for every thousand dollars you make. You wouldn't owe that two hundred dollars for that one thousand dollars. You wouldn't know it. Oh, okay, but. This is a big deal now, right? Because if you're a 20% tax bracket and you're writing off that thousand dollars and then it ends up costing you throughout the year and you're single and, and you're like, I spent $10,000 on my business credit card. Well, your standard deduction is 14,600. So you wouldn't even do your deductions at the end of the year. Does it make sense to do deductions? Just do the standard deduction and then you won't pay taxes on that 14,600, not your itemized 10,000 dollar deduction. Now, if you've got W-2 income, which means that you work for an employer, then you don't need to worry about this anyway. You just take the standard deduction. If you're an independent trainer, this is very, very important for you. If all your business comes from independent training or your own business, then standard deduction, most likely out the door, you've got a lot of expenses that are going on because you're a business owner. And anything that you have that goes towards your business you could write that off, right? So you can now uh, write off a lot of things that that you maybe wouldn't have been able to write off before. I'm not going to say what those are because you're going to run that by your, your uh, accountant. But there are a lot of things that you can write off. Now, if you have both W-2 and 1099, so you work for an employer and you work for yourself, you're going to have to track the money that you make. So a lot of people love working for themselves and an employer, but they don't tell anybody about it. So they don't, they keep all of that 1099, that self-employed money to themselves. It's all a cash business. You can't write anything off. You can't write anything off. And so and the reason that's important is that later down the road, you don't have enough money in your W-2 to show that you make enough money to finance a car or put a down payment and get a house or whatever it is. So if you're working towards those things, then you want to track the amount of your money and you'll want to pay taxes on that just so you get credit for having the ability to afford things that you may want to afford later in life. All right. Um, also, if you get a business credit card, very important try your absolute best, absolute best, absolute best. Do not go in debt with it. Pay off your card at the end of every month. You pay off your card at the end of every month. You can't just say, oh, all I have, all I do is I owe $20 on this. Only $20. I paid $100 for some bands and equipment and I pay off the $20 minimum. At the end of that, it'll take you a couple of years to pay that off because you're only paying the $20 minimum. I know it should only take five, but that's not how it works. Five months, that's not how it works. It'll take you over a year to pay it off and you'll end up paying over 100% of what you owe. So be aware of that. Your, your credit card makes a lot of money off of people. So pay off your credit card. Good, Get earn your points, do all those things, put it on your credit card, but at the end of every month, if possible, pay them off. All right. This episode of the NASM CPT podcast is brought to you by NASM One, the membership for trainers and coaches. Members enjoy unlimited access to hundreds of career resources. Get the Edge app to schedule and program clients. Enjoy half off all certifications and specializations, access to free CEUs, and more. All of this for just 
$35 a month. Go to nasm.org slash membership to learn more about NASM One. All right. I want to say this also when it comes to working with your money. So you're paying off your credit card. You're uh, you're going to want to also have a, a little emergency fund. An emergency fund is usually what the finance folks say is try to have at least three months worth of expenses in cash. Now, that's hard to get to. I understand that. I acknowledge that. But three months worth of expenses for emergency, something goes wrong with the car. You don't want to be like, hey, I'm going to use my business credit card and then I'm going to spend it. And then at the end of the year, you're spending more on your accounting because you're like, I can't figure out why did you put a thousand dollars worth of stuff for your card uh, on your credit card for a car. And the car is not what you can't write off your car problems that you can have. You can write off your miles that takes you to ride to and from your clients or to and from work as an independent 1099. You can't just be like, oh, let me put on my credit card. Not your business one. You'll have another credit card for your other expenses. But do you have backup money that can take care of things that come up like that? And if you don't, I understand. But it's time to check what you're spending money on too. And like, hey, just realize, I mean, I put it together, put it together. I spend, I, I buy a coffee every day, every day. And it costs $5. And at the end of the week, I'm like, all right, so I spend, I spend $25 on that. Usually it costs a little bit more than that. And I was like, you know, it's a hundred dollars a month that if I spent half of that, less than half of that, I just put it in one of my little Stanley mugs or whatever I have here, Contigo. And I do my Keurig, which costs me 50 cents a pod because I don't buy Keurig brand. Some little off-brand business. Um, that's a dollar every time I fill that thing up. That's a That's a better deal. And so I think that's my goal now. Spend less money on going out and getting my giant iced coffee and just bring the coffee from home. So that way I can save up the money and then the rest of it. Here's the thing. You're going to put aside for retirement. And if you are a W-2, which means you have an employer and your employer offers a 401k, that is an employer sponsored retirement plan. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. And if they offer an employer match, do it. What's an employer match? Well, usually what that is, is up to a certain amount of money. Let's say, I think when I was doing it, and this was back in 2002 when I first became a trainer, and I did this at this, this my place of employment when they had it for, I think, three years. And I put as much as I possibly could. So 15% is all they allowed. So you put in 15% of my paycheck, and I just had it deducted. But then they matched up to $3,000. That's free money. That's free money. So as much as possible, you can put into your retirement. And then after that, that money that's free, that comes from your employers, like you don't get free money anywhere. You put money in the market and your hope, let's dream, let's hope a 10% return. Well, free money, if you put in $3,000, they put in $3,000. That's a 100% return. You can't do better than the free money. So if there's a 401k, do that stuff. Do it. Know that you cannot take any of this money out until you're the age of retirement. And if you're on your own, you are not, you don't have an employer or you do have an employer and they don't do it, then you can do uh, an IRA, an individual retirement account, and you can put money away in those, but it's got to stay away. You can't touch it. It's not a retirement account if it's a savings account, which means that you cannot touch it until the age, most of them are 59 and a half. And I'll say this as, you know, 59 and a half ain't close for me, but it ain't far now that I'm thinking about it, some retirement. Uh, I hope to still be working because I want to still be working at that age, not because I have to, I mean, I probably still have to, but that's not what I want. Uh, but I'll probably keep money in that account so it will continue to grow because I want that money to continue to grow until I have to start taking mandatory 
distributions where they have to be like, you can't keep your money in this account. You got to start taking some of it out. And I'll be like, okay, I'm sure I'll be delighted to take it out. But I want to see that money continue to grow, reinvest, snowball, and build. And that is what I want for you. So when it comes to finances, a lot of times we don't get that information. People don't talk to fitness professionals the way that you get guidance in so many other fields. You don't get this kind of guidance when it comes to how do you how do you take care of your money? How do you invest? How do you prepare for retirement? A lot of times it's just like the nature of the beast. We're like free bird. Like I just I'm I'm living my best life. I'm a personal trainer. I can do what I want. I love the freedom. And then what? And then it gets to be when you want to retire and you need to have that money set aside. You can't just rely on that social security, baby. You want to be able to supplement it so that you can live comfortably in retirement. That's what I want for you. And that's why I'm going to keep putting these little bugs in your ears and maybe you'll, uh, you'll act on it if you haven't already. All right, y'all. Thanks for listening. Like, subscribe, share with your fitness friends and family, and leave a review. And that's greatly appreciated. If you want to reach out to me, like these people did who ask about uh, some of the things that they can write off, then you can hit me up. You can do so on Instagram at dr.rickritchie or email me rick.ritchie at nasm.org. Y'all keep inspiring people to fitness. Thanks for listening. This has been the NASM CPT Podcast.